Today, we are taking a look at what's on my iPhone for 2020. Let's get it. First of all, let's take a look at the iPhone itself. The iPhone is an iPhone 11 Pro uh, Midnight Green at 256 gigabytes of storage. It's been an excellent phone and I highly recommend it. Let's take a look at what's on the iPhone physically. I've got the dbrand grip case in the Swarm configuration and holy crap, what a coincidence, dbrand is actually the sponsor of this video. This case has actually saved my phone from a few mishaps and it's tough as nails. The buttons are some of the clickiest in cases. And if you're looking for a case to protect your phone, definitely check out what dbrand has to offer. Link in the description. All right, so taking a look at the home screen, um, I've got a very interesting organization system for my iPhone. Uh, I found this online somewhere, cannot remember where, but basically having three uh, columns of icons on the left and then one column of folders on the right. I like this kind of organization system. I'm very OCD, can't you tell? Um, but uh, this is kind of how I've set everything up. It takes a little bit of like organization to get it to line up like this. Um, since I am mostly left-handed, but right-handed when I use my phone, I have all my folders on the right just so that it's easier to access. But um, this is kind of how I have everything set up. Okay, so at the top, we've got Halide. Halide is obviously my favorite camera app. I actually work for them quite a lot, but before I ever worked for them, I still loved it as my favorite camera app because it's just so well designed and so well made. Um, but that is my favorite camera app for iPhone. Then we've got Darkroom. Darkroom, I use it more for cropping than I do for anything else. I prefer Lightroom a little bit more just because Darkroom is still a little bit buggy, but they just released an update, so that might be different. Now they actually allow you to edit videos, which is pretty cool, and I'm excited to play with that. Um, but Darkroom is there on the second second app there. We've got Photos. You obviously know what Photos is. Um, it's just a great way to view your photos. Why am I trying to advertise the default Photos app on iPhone? That's stupid. Then we've got my imaging folder. This is just like a ton of like imaging related stuff. Lightroom, Filmic Pro, camera, panels, film cam, Focus, kind of a crappy app. Uh, RNI Films, Huji, Visco, Spectre, that's another um, uh, Halide or Lux Optics app. Uh, same people that make Halide. Uh, we've got the Fujifilm camera remote, which sucks by the way. Uh, Artemis Pro, Sunseeker, First Light, Moment, Disposable, LumaFusion, Unfold, Retro, uh, Polar, uh, Layout, Spark Camera, Google Photos. None of these, aside from Spectre and um, maybe Retro, Spark Camera, Artemis Pro, Fujifilm, Unfold, and Lightroom do I really use in this folder. And I should probably reorganize this because it's a little bit of a mess. This is kind of how I have it set up. So moving on to that second row, we've got Mail, Google Calendar, Books, and this folder called Social. This row is less structured and it kind of gets worse as it goes on. Um, the first row is like just photo related stuff and everything else is kind of like random. But here, like Mail and Google Calendar, they make sense together. Books, not so much. And I rarely open that app either. So it's a little weird why I have that there. I should probably change that. But anyway, moving on to the social app or social folder, we've got, you know, Instagram, Snapchat. This is messaging and social media related stuff. Some of my favorite apps here, besides like the stupid like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, I'm not gonna advertise those to you. Telegram is really nice for messaging. I enjoy it if I can't use iMessage with someone. Um, I really enjoy Apollo. That's a fantastic uh, Reddit client made by uh, Christian Selig. I think that's how I pronounced his last name. I'm sorry, dude. I I'm sorry, um, but it's a fantastic app. It's so well made. There's always these new updates with lots and lots of features. So it's really, really fun. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite Reddit client. Um, I've got a few other apps here. None of them are really that special. I do have Facebook installed and I feel bad about that, but like I use Instagram already. So like who cares, but I feel bad about that. I also have TikTok installed. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry from the bottom of my heart. I am sorry for installing TikTok and using it on a mm, daily basis. Sorry. Okay, moving on to the third row. We've got Pocket Casts, Netflix, Weekend Read, and Work. Uh, these, again, not so much like categorized by any kind of uh, rhyme or reason. Pocket Casts is a podcasting app. It's my favorite. Um, I've tried to use Overcast. I keep trying to use it, but the design of Overcast is just really confusing and hard to understand, whereas Pocket Casts feels very straightforward. Um, Pocket Casts does have some bugs periodically. They're just really annoying, but from just overall, I like Pocket Casts better. Um, then we've got Netflix. I don't really need to explain that. Um, sorry if I do. Go Google Netflix and you'll learn what it is. Um, we Can Read is a fantastic script reading app. It allows you to import scripts and just read them in like a better formatted way for your phone. And it's really, really good. So if you're into reading scripts, definitely recommend this app. Okay, so now onto this work folder. This work folder is uh, a bunch of apps that are work related. Nothing super significant here. Um, Trello, I really enjoy for task management. I actually use it for school as well. And if you wanna learn how I use that for school, 
definitely check out this link that's gonna be like here, here, I cannot remember which side, and somewhere in the description. Um, I did a collab with Keep Productive Francesco, and we talked about how I use everything to manage all my schoolwork. So I highly recommend that if you're a student. Anyway, moving on. Um, pretty much standard apps here. Zendesk I use for um, doing customer support for Halide. Um, Figma Mirror could probably be moved to Sift, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Ulysses is a fantastic writing app. I really enjoy it for its little progress bar when you have a word count that you have to hit for like a school paper or something like that. Very, very nice to write in that way. And then I'll take that to Google Docs and finish it up. But I really like using Ulysses for that specifically. Notion I sometimes use. It's okay, it's kind of buggy. Um, I use it for some things, not for other things, and it's kind of like just a mess right now, so don't really pay attention to that. But um, yeah, that's my work folder. Okay, so now moving on to that fourth row, we've got, again, kind of a hodgepodge of apps. We've got Safari, uh, YouTube Studio, Settings, I don't really need to explain those. We've got this money folder, money-related stuff. Wallet, Cash App, Discover, Venmo, PayPal, Wells Fargo, YNAB, Invoices, Robinhood. I really enjoy YNAB for managing everything, keeping track of where my money is and what goes to where. Really, really important for me to kind of just know uh, if I'm gonna be in debt or if I'm not. That's just an important question in life. Are you gonna be in debt or are you not? Anyway, um, that's kind of how I keep track of everything there. Now, moving on to that fifth row. We've got Timery, Letterboxd, Day One, and Sift. Timery, a fantastic app that I highly recommend if you're into time tracking. Um, I used to use this app called Toggle, and I actually still do technically, but this is a third-party client that interfaces with Toggle, um, and it is just really well designed, really well made. It uses series shortcuts. It's, it's beautifully designed. It works super, super well. Highly recommend it. It's an indie app, so definitely check it out. Link in the description. Okay, so moving on to the next app, we've got Letterboxd or Letterboxd, but I'm pretty sure it's just Letterboxd. Anyway, this app is like social media, but for film nerds. It's a little weird, but the idea is that you're able to uh, keep track of your movies and log your movies. So if you watch a movie, you can go into the app, add it to your like watched list. You can rate it, you can write a little review, and it keeps track of like what days you've seen what movies. You can keep track of all the movies you've seen that month or um, make a little list of your top favorite movies of the year and things like that. You can follow other people. Um, you can browse these lists and things like that. It's just really, really fun and I highly recommend it. Moving on to day one, this app is a journaling app. Very, very fun, very, very simple. I'm not the best at journaling. I've kind of lost it over the past month or so. I'm trying to get back into it. So I have this on my home screen to try to remind me, even though I never really see it because I'm just so used to my home screen. But anyway, journaling is a really, really therapeutic way to kind of deal with things that happen in your day, kind of process through things. It's really, 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 really healthy. And I really, really enjoy it. I'm saying really, really way too much. Anyway, great app, recommend it, like in the description. Now onto the Sift app. You might've been wondering what the frick is going on with this Sift app. Basically, this is my catch-all folder, my other folder. Um, no real organization here besides of like, oh, it doesn't fit in the other apps or in the other folders, so I'm just gonna throw it here. Um, yeah, I need to organize this. It's a bit of a mess, but um, yeah, that's what that is. It's my catch-all folder. Moving on to this last row, we've got three apps. We've got the GitHub app, which is a fantastic app for managing all your repositories, keeping track of issues, things like that. If you're not a developer, Ignore this part because this doesn't mean anything to you, but it's fantastic to finally have GitHub making their own client app because previously it was just all these third parties and GitHub, you know, making their own app is really, really nice. And I feel like it was long overdue, but it's finally out. It's a great app, highly recommend it. And then we've got the Bible app. Don't really need to talk about that besides the fact that it's the Bible app. I'm a Christian, so I have the Bible app installed on my phone. Um, it's a little bit weird because it's become more like a social media, a specific app um, than just the Bible, but I'm here for it. so cool. And then we've got the Patreon app, which is, you know, kind of self-explanatory. I don't have my own Patreon. I'm just subscribed to two. Uh, one is Brandon Havard's Patreon. And then the other one is, uh, the Wandering DP Patreon. Um, I like having the app installed. I don't know if I will have my own Patreon someday. I might, we'll see. But, um, for now I'm just using it to kind of keep up on what people are doing. And then moving on to my doc first, we've got Todoist. Todoist, I've talked about it in the past. It's my uh, one of my favorite you know, task management apps. I also keep jumping back and forth between things and Todoist, but right now I'm just kind of stuck on Todoist. Um, natural language processing is just amazing on that app. Uh, highly recommend it. I've talked about it in videos in the past, so you can kind of look for those. Um, but if you're looking for a better task management system, highly recommend it. Uh, then we've got Bear. Bear is a fantastic notes writing app. I really, really enjoy it for keeping track of kind of everything, like quick little notes, longer notes, etc. cetera. Um, not so much writing big documents like school projects, but more just like need to remember something, writing a song, whatever. That's where I'll put that. Highly recommend it. Um, messages, don't really need to talk about that. And then we've got Spotify. 
And that's it for what's in my iPhone for 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys found an app or two that you'll have fun with. Um, this is kind of what I've been rocking for the past few months and it's been really, really fun. I don't really have an outro anymore because I think it's not really that important to tell people to subscribe or not subscribe or hit the bell or whatever. Um, none of you are watching this. So like if you're watching this, thank you and hi, I love you. But uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video, I guess. That feels like MKBHD's outro. I don't like that. I mean, I like his outro, but I'm not gonna steal it. Should we just make it an awkward outro every single time? Maybe.